India, a land of diverse cultures, traditions, and landscapes, is also a land of ambitious mega-projects. These projects, a testament to human ingenuity and perseverance, are transforming the country's infrastructure and energy landscape. They're not just about concrete, steel, and high-tech systems, but also about the dreams, aspirations, and future of 1.3 billion people. So, what are these projects that are shaping the future of India, and should we be intrigued about them? Let's see. Number 1. Mumbai Coastal Road Starting off, we have the Mumbai Coastal Road, officially named the Chhatrapati Samvaji Maharaj Coastal Highway, which is an under-construction 8-lane, 29.2km long expressway that will run along Mumbai's western coastline, connecting marine lines in the south to Kandy Valley in the north. This ambitious project is projected to be used by 130,000 vehicles daily, significantly reducing travel time between South Mumbai and the western suburbs from 2 hours to only 40 minutes. The estimated cost of the project is 13,060 crore, 1.6 billion US dollars. The coastal road includes 2.07 kilometers of twin tunnels connecting Gijan Chalpati and Pridyarashini Park. The tunnels are located at depths of 14 to 72 meters below the surface, passing 14 to 15 meters under Gijan Chalpati, 20 meters below Pridyarashini Park, and 72 meters under Malabar Hill and the Hanging Gardens. A 1 km stretch of the tunnels also passes 17 to 20 meters under the Arabian Sea, making them the first undersea tunnels in India. The project also involves the reclamation of 111 hectares of land from the sea, of which 26.5 hectares is used for the road and its interchanges, and 14.5 hectares to build the sea well. The remaining 70 hectares, or about 63.6% .6 of the total reclaimed land, will be used as a green space for recreational amenities. This is the largest land reclamation undertaken in the history of independent India. The Coastal Road project has faced several legal and environmental challenges. Critics of the freeway opposed it due to the reclamation required to have also cited possible environmental degradation along the coast. Coastal Regulation Zone CRZ, norms in India disallow reclamation of land. Construction of the coastal freeway would require a relaxation of the CRZ norms as certain sections are proposed on reclaimed land. Despite these challenges, the project has made significant progress. As of May 2023, the BMC announced that 75% of work on the project and 95% of land reclamation has been completed. The first phase of the coastal road is expected to reduce travel time between Princess Street and the Bandrawali Sea Link from 35 to 45 minutes during peak hours to under 10 minutes. It is also projected to reduce fuel consumption by 35% and carbon emissions by 1,826 tonnes annually. Number 2. Dolera Solar Park the Dolera Solar Park, located in the Dolera village of Gujarat, India, is a massive 5 gigawatt solar power project that is being developed in two phases. The project is approximately 80 kilometers from the Ahmabad, the largest city in the state of Gujarat. The power generated by the solar park will be transmitted through substations, making it a significant contributor to the region's energy grid. The project is being developed by the Gujarat Urja Nigam Limited GUVN, through a public-private partnership PPP. GUVN is working with several other organizations including Gujarat Power Corporation, Gujarat Electric Transmission Corporation, Solar Energy Corporation and Power Grid Corporation of India to implement the project. The first phase of the project, which has a capacity of 1 gigawatt, is being developed by GPCL with an investment of RS5 billion. $695 million. The second phase, with a capacity of 4 gigawatts, will be developed by SECI with an estimated investment of RS20 billion, $2.7 billion. The Dolera Solar Park project is part of the government's Dolera Smart City project, which was announced in 2009. The project supports the government's aim to produce 175 gigawatts of clean energy by this year. The Ministry of New and Renewable Energy approved the project in May 2018, and conditional approval for the first phase of development was received in February 2019. The solar park will be located in a coastal regulation zone, Type 1B land within the Dolera Special Investment Region, situated along the Gulf of the Kambat region, Gujarat. The DSIR spans 920 square kilometers and encompasses 22 Gujarat villages. 
The region is well connected by road, rail, airport and seaport, and lies close to the megacities of Gujarat, including Ahmabad, Bhavnagar and Vadodara. The solar park will cover a total area of 8,595 hectares, which has been divided into 11 blocks with 27 plots in each block. Each plot will have 100 megawatts, 160 megawatts and 200 megawatts capacity blocks. Solar photovoltaic modules based on polycrystalline silicon technology will be installed at the solar park. The power generated by the Dolera Solar Park will be transmitted through a 49 km long, 33kV underground cable network, including high and low voltage lines. The cable network will be built across the park to transport the generated power from the solar panels to pooling substations and into a 33-400kV to 400 kV substation. The Dolera Solar Park is not just a solar power project, it's a symbol of India's commitment to renewable energy and sustainable development. It represents the country's efforts to reduce its carbon footprint and move forward towards a greener future. But what it takes to build such a massive solar park is pretty commendable if you ask me. Number 3. Gift City At number 3 is Gujarat International Finance Tech City, commonly known as Gift City, which also happens to be India's first operational smart city and international financial services centre. It is located between Ahmedabad and Gandhinagar in the Indian state of Gujarat. The city is a public-private partnership venture set up to provide high-quality physical infrastructure so that finance and tech firms can relocate their operations from Mumbai, Bangalore, Gujaran, etc., where infrastructure is either inadequate or very expensive. The city is designed to be at or above par with globally benchmarked business districts. It is equipped with all modern amenities and infrastructure comparable to those at Gift City. The city is expected to create job opportunities for about a million people. Gift City consists of a conducive multi-service SEZ special economic zone and an exclusive domestic tariff area DTA. The SEZ at Gift is a self-contained city with a symbiotic blend of residential, commercial and social facilities where people can live, work and play. It is being developed on 886 acres of land with all the requisite infrastructure. Gift City is attracting a lot of interest from IT and ITES companies for setting up their operations. The city provides state-of-the-art infrastructure, plug-and-play offices, clean and green environments, and a hassle-free business environment. It offers its occupants an excellent quality of life, which is at par with the best in the world. The city is also attracting a lot of interest from international and domestic financial services enterprises. These enterprises are keen to set up their operations in Gift City to take advantage of the benefits offered by the government for IFSC International Financial Services Centre. The city is also home to India's first international arbitrarian centre, which provides a platform for resolving disputes between different entities. The international arbitrarian centre at Gift City is at par with top arbitrarian centres in cities like London, Singapore, Hong Kong, etc. Number 4. The Chenab Bridge and finally, we have the Chenab Bridge, which is located between Bakal and Kauri in the Risi district of Jammu and Kashmir, and stands at a staggering height of 359 meters, making it the tallest rail bridge in the world. The 1,315 meter long structure is part of the Jammu Uthampur Srinagar Baramula Rail Line project undertaken by the Ministry of Indian Railways. The bridge, costing $181 million, includes a 14-metre-wide dual carriageway and a 1.2-metre-wide central verge. The track laying work on the bridge was completed in March 2023, and it is scheduled to enter service in 2024. The Shenab Bridge is designed to have a lifespan of 120 years and is expected to contribute significantly to local economic development and better transportation accessibility in the region. The construction of the Shenab Bridge was a response to the urgent need for improved transportation facilities in the mountainous terrain of J&K. The JUSBRL project, launched in 2003, aimed to enhance mobility within J&K and across India. The railway line traverses along Jammu Udhampur Katra Kwazugund Barumula, with the construction of the Jammu Udhampur section completed and opened in April 2005. 
The remaining 111 Katrabani Hal section is expected to be completed in 2024. The Shenab Bridge is an architectural marvel, designed as a large steel arc, the first of its kind in India. The bridge includes 17 spans, as well as the 469-meter main arch span across the Shenab River, and viaducts on either side. The main span of the bridge includes two 36-meter long approach spans. It is built as a two-ribbed arch with steel trusses made of concrete-filled sealed steel boxes. The structure is supported by two 130-meter-long, 100-meter-high pylons on either end through cables. The bridge was constructed in one of the most complicated and isolated terrains. One of the biggest challenges involved was the construction of the bridge without obstructing the flow of the river. Approach roads measuring 5 km in length were constructed to reach the foundations of the bridge. The deck of the bridge is located on a transition curve with changing radius. Construction was therefore carried out in stages following the gradual change in the alignment. This is the first time a bridge was constructed incrementally on a transition curve. The construction of the bridge required 25,000 tons of steel, 4,000 tons of reinforced steel, 46,000 cubic meters of concrete, and 8 million cubic meters of excavation. The construction of the bridge was discontinued in 2008 due to alignment and safety issues, with estimated completion in 2015, which was subsequently pushed to 2019. The construction of the iconic steel arch of the bridge was completed in April 2021, with the construction of the overarch deck completed in August 2022. All these projects are not just about infrastructure development, they are about shaping the future of India. They are about turning challenges into opportunities, dreams into reality. This brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it, please consider subscribing and sharing so we can keep bringing more content like this. See you next time.